It's a beautiful evening in Kampala and as the sun departs Uganda's biggest city, our cameras are up and rolling for the second quarter-final of the day. The Uganda, the Uganda cranes, the defending champions, are up against Ethiopia. We are live at the Mandela National Stadium for what should be a very interesting game between two sides that have lots of pedigree in this very region. The big question is who? Actually, we'll take the one spot remaining in the semi-finals at this year's edition. Do remember, we've got language options for you in commentary this very evening. You can listen to Uganda up against Ethiopia, both in English or actually you can go for Luganda. All you have to do is go to the language button on your remote. Do press and you have two options. That is one of two or two of two. Luganda commentary, of course, is with Bruce Turiamobona, our winner of the Tabira Endiwa competition here in Uganda. And that is what your World of Champions is all about about we do give you the options we do give you the chances as well when it comes to big games like these ones like uganda up against ethiopia i'm joined by alan sekamate you're full of smiles is it because of the occasion yeah absolutely I've, I've, i think we've been experiencing complete football nirvana kenya playing excellent football tanzania excellent zanzibar excellent so i think uh, i'm really anticipating an even better match between uganda and ethiopia now i'll tell you something i've spoken to so many fans and so many analysts and everyone suggests uganda will qualify why and so many people giving ethiopia a chance it's principally because Uganda never loses at home. This is a fortress. Uh, Uganda last lost a game here at Nambole nine years ago in 2003 against South Africa. So Uganda very strong at home. They have a very good pedigree uh, because they are the record champions. They've won this tournament 12 times. Uh, and I think uh, that gives them a very good advantage. All right, let's quickly show you what the results have been like in the knockout stages at this year's tournament here in Kampala. There you go, the quarterfinals, Rwanda losing out to Tanzania, and of course Burundi <laughs> losing out as well when it came down to penalties. Kenya have beaten Malawi now, opening quarterfinal of the day, goals nil, and then the big one. The live one, the Uganda Cranes are up against Ethiopia this very evening. Let's talk about the Uganda Cranes, 12-time champions. They're also the kind of side that does bring lots and lots of respect from the region, and that is their journey. Yeah, that's right. Opening uh, day, one nil victory over Kenya. Uh, Baba Kizito, youngster, 20 years old, uh, plays in Saigon with uh, uh, a Vietnamese club, and uh, uh, that was uh, three points for Uganda, quickly out of the blocks. It wasn't the most imposing performance, uh, but uh, so much respect there coming in from the Kenyans. The Kenyans are uh, putting men behind the ball. Then the second game of the tournament there, Uganda up against Ethiopia. Brian Omoni, uh, he really enjoys playing in this tournament. Uh, back pass there from uh, Okui, Brian Omoni planting the ball into the back of the net. That's how it ended, 1-0 uh, for Uganda. Bobby Williamson uh, donning that moustache uh, uh, in the fight against uh, uh, prostate cancer and then of course Omoni again in the game against uh, uh, Sudan uh, that uh, was a 4 nil victory Brian Omoni has already scored uh, three goals in this tournament making his coach very very happy and then uh, this time uh, he's being set up there by the youngster Saidi Cheyune Brian Omoni once again he's already scored eight international goals in the Sekafa so he's really having fun in this tournament and then Robert Sentongo a man who has forced his way into the starting lineup all right, there you go. Good journey it has been by at the Uganda Cranes until this point. But no goals were still to come from the defending champions. Yeah, two of them created, of course, and then Hamis Diego Kiza with uh, the icing on the cake. All right, icing on the cake. I do like that very phrase because there's lots of ice, uh, well, yeah, in Kampala, in the fridges, I should suggest. But anyway, this is confirmation of those results. Three wins for the defending champions. They are sending out a statement. Yeah, that's a very powerful statement from the defending champions. Uganda, of course, also the highest ranked team in the FIFA Coca-Cola World Rankings. Uganda always seem to win their games when they're playing at home. All right, there you go. The Uganda Cranes will come into this very game knowing they have a massive chance if pedigree is anything to go by. The thing is, how crucial is pedigree at a stage like this one? I think pedigree does matter. Ethiopia, of course, are former African champions themselves, so they are not <laughs> they are not uh, paperweights in this tournament. Uh, they are uh, African champions from 1962, and Uganda, in 24 meetings with Ethiopia, have won nine. Ethiopia have won eight, so it should be close. All right, the Uganda Cranes are the hosts at this year's tournament. They too are the defending champions. So how crucial is being a host in a game like this one? I asked that very question to Bobby Williamson, and this is what he told me. Uh, to be fair, yes, it should be. Uh, we will have a large majority of the fans. 
and uh, they'll get behind us as usual. So yeah, we have got a slight advantage, but uh, we're well warned. Ethiopia are a good team. They gave us a difficult match uh, last week, and I'm sure they'll give us a difficult match this week. And let's talk about Ethiopia, the only Sikafa member that will be at the Africa Cup of Nations. Could that in any way affect the mentality of the Ugandan players? No, not at all. As I said, we don't fear anyone. We respect everybody. But uh, I prefer just to talk about Uganda. You speak to the Ethiopian coach about Ethiopia, please. All right, coach. Uh, this is, of course, the quarter-final stage. Uganda has had a good run coming into this game. Just how competitive has the tournament been for you? Yeah, well, you look at the scores and the games, uh, there's not been a lot of goals. Sure, we, we capitalised against South Sudan under difficult circumstances. But as you can see, the, the pitch is very bumpy and uh, very uneven, which makes it a good leveller uh, for both teams because they've got the same problems to deal with. But um, it's a shame because uh, both teams like to play football. Mm, a very confident Bobby Williamson. We have a ball that is hitting us at the moment. But anyway, that is a part of a live coverage here in Kampala. Hamza Mwonge has gotten the first choice gloves ahead of an Abel Daira, who is actually injured. Yeah, Hamza Mwonge, of course, a very experienced goalkeeper in this tournament. He was between the sticks uh, when Uganda won this tournament in Nairobi in 2009. Uh, so he's uh, very much the natural choice there for the coach in the absence of Abel Daira. All right, the big question is, can he keep a clean sheet for the Uganda Cranes in today's match? But if they are to win this game, they need good wing play. And one of the players they'll be looking out for as well is Moses Oloya. Yeah, Moses Oloya, of course, is the life force for the Uganda Cranes. He's uh, a dribbler of the ball. He creates chances by taking people out of positions and uh, we do expect him to have his best game. He's not yet uh, been the best Moses Oloya, but I think he likes an occasion like this. Mm, he's tricky on the ball, he's got quick feet as well. How crucial will he be uh, for the Uganda Cranes? They need goals and Brian Omoni is the answer. Yeah, Brian Omoni always guarantees goals. He scored five goals in Uganda winning the tournament here in 2008 and uh, he's already helped himself to three goals in this tournament. Those are eight goals in Sekafa. Uh, he must be one of the greatest goal grabbers in this tournament and I think he's going to find the back of the net. <laughs> there you go with your ranking once again. So you think Brian Omoni is uh, probably one of the best goal scorers in this region and you're standing by your statement. Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. Well, uh, let's now quickly look at what exactly has been happening in the tournament as well. The Uganda Cranes having a good start to the tournament and the big question will be can they go on and win this match as well? Do they have that bigger chance? Yeah, they have a very good chance. I've told you they, uh, they like to play at home. They respond to the 12th man who is the crowd here and uh, they have a superior uh, ranking to Ethiopia, 28 positions ahead of uh, Ethiopia. So I think Uganda Cranes, uh, I think uh, anybody who is uh, betting out there would like to put his money on Uganda Cranes. All right, there is action here at the Mandela National Stadium, but there will be more action across the African continent, especially in January when it comes to Africa's biggest soccer showpiece. They, of course, South Africa will be opening up against Cape Verde for the very first game at this year's tournament. Then the defending champions will be taking on the only representative from Sekafa, Ethiopia. Interesting game, it will be at 1700 Central African time. So make sure you watch out for those games here on your World of Champions. Quick break, when we come back, we look at this Ethiopian side. How strong are they ahead of today's game?
beautiful sights here in Kampala, Uganda's biggest city and the capital city as well, does welcome you to yet the second quarter final at this year's edition of the Sekafa Tusker Cup. We are live here at the Mandela National Stadium and just before we went for Brook, we are taking everything about the Uganda Cranes. Of course, Alan is the man to take us through this one as well. Ethiopia, let's be honest, what are their chances in this game? Uh, Ethiopia have 33% uh, chances. I do think that Uganda Cranes have about 70% chance, uh, principally because Ethiopia do not come into this game with an 100% record. They've only won one of their, th uh, their group games, uh, but they have a very good pedigree. They are the only team at this tournament playing at the African Nations Cup. <laughs> I like that fact, but let's show you uh, where this Ethiopian side uh, has come through in terms of them being in the quarterfinals. This was their first game, Alan. Yeah, that's right. They won this one by a goal to nil. Uh, square ball there for Jonathan Kebede. Jonathan Kebede uh, eventually finding uh, the opening goal of the game there. You thought that uh, uh, they were going to route South Sudan, but uh, it ended only in a one nil victory. And it is this one nil victory that has seen them qualify for the quarterfinals. Mm, there you go. Good start coming in uh, from them then. They faced the Uganda Cranes. Yes, then against Uganda Cranes. Uh, Uganda Cranes very quickly out of the box, uh, pinning Ethiopia back there. And uh, Emmanuel Okui setting up the chance there for Brian Omoni. No mistake from uh, six yards uh, uh, from the goal posture. Mm, there you go. And of course, celebrations from that man, Bobby Williamson. We shall be seeing more of him on the touchline. Uh, they kept being in all sorts of problems, but they were also struggling against Kenya. Yeah, they struggled very badly against Kenya. They failed to live with Kenya's physical game. They failed to live with Kenya's pace. And uh, Kenya punishing them brutally there uh, in a 3-1 uh, victory for the Harambe Stars. <laughs> Brutal punishments, you have called them. Uh, there you go, of course, the Harambe starts celebrating a couple of goals. Uh, they kept uh, conceding goals, but this is probably the strike of the tournament. Yeah, one of the best goals we've seen at this tournament uh, coming from distance there, ball dipping at the right time, and saying Moon, uh, Kebede, the coach, was really a very happy man. <laughs> Good stuff uh, from this Ethiopian side. The big question, this still does start after conceding all those goals against the Harambe stars. Can they come up and pick results here against the Uganda Crane? So then, we should be looking at a confirmation of their results. Those results show they have made it here because they are the best losers. Yeah, they're the best uh, uh, losers there because uh, uh, they edged out Sudan courtesy of the number of goals they scored. Uh, both uh, Ethiopia and Sudan had a negative uh, goal difference of minus two, but uh, Ethiopia in the quarterfinals precisely because they scored two goals. Mm, all right, there you go, Ethiopia anyway. Even though they lost two games in the group stages, they are this year's quarterfinals. Now, no one wants to play against the host, especially if it's a defending champion. So how hard is it for Ethiopia? I caught up with their coach Sayum Kebede and this is what he says. Uh, normally, at first, uh, I would like to say thank you for the almighty God to reach this uh, knockout stage with this new squad of Ethiopian national team. So, you know, uh, we'll try our, our best to be uh, qualified for semi-final. At the beginning, in the preliminary, we, we meet each other with Uganda. We know each other. So, we have a chance to do something in this game. Already, uh, we have some changes of the some formations and some tactical duties. Anyways, at least we'll do all the best to achieve good result. Coach, tell us about the changes you've made to your team ahead of today's match. Uh, normally, uh, you know, uh, after, after uh, we know we qualified after this, for this game, we have already prepared with a lot of things. Uh, we analyzed our games before, how we are strong side and the, the weak side. So according to that, uh, our players, they will be in the field, real, they will be in the field. They will do something, I hope. Now they have a good confidence now. Mm, Sayum Kabede, they are making uh, his statements very, very clear. This is a game where you don't want to concede. And that means you've got to look at the last man in defence. And this time round, it's Samson Woku for this Ethiopian side. Yeah, Samson Woku has already considered uh, four goals in this tournament. That's the highest uh, number of uh, goals considered in that particular group. Uh, so you, uh, he's going to be a man uh, to watch there. He's going to be bombarded uh, by the current strikers. And if he stands tall, uh, Ethiopia will have a chance of reaching the semi-finals. All right, they've considered a couple of goals with that man in between goal, but they need the goals. Yared Zinabu from the midfield has got to be strong today. Uh, Yared Zinabu, of course, is uh, a defender. He's, uh, uh, been, he's, he's lightweight. He was converted from a midfielder to, to a defender, and uh, he's going to be under stern examination this evening. And let's talk about one of their major players, the captain. He does score goals, but he hasn't found that many at this year's tournament. Yeah, Fikru uh, uh, Tefera is uh, the man, plays in Vietnam, 
and uh, he's uh, one of the players who actually who was brought to this tournament so that the coach can have a good look at him uh, because he has a, an outside chance of making it to the Africa Cup of Nations. If he is scores twice today, he might just board the plane to South Africa. Fikru Tefera, this is the point of a build-up I don't like. I don't like putting you on the spot. And I will ask you, what is your prediction? My prediction for this game will have to be 2-1 uh, to Uganda. Uh, Nambole always a fortress. Uh, yeah, you do think that they'll take full advantage of that. Uh, Ethiopia will push them, especially if Uganda continue uh, playing a very... Um, pedestrian midfield. All right, as we look, as the fans making their routes, the flags are all over here at the Mandela National Stadium. Just how crucial are these fans, especially for the Uganda Cranes? They've always been a, a tour of man for Uganda Cranes. The fans, the decibel levels uh, raised by the fans here. They're always in song, they're always in dance, and that lifts the adrenaline for the players. And I think uh, that's precisely why Uganda are going to beat Ethiopia this evening. And let's just look at the fact that Ethiopia are the only, actually, Sekafa uh, nation that is at uh, uh, the Africa Cup of Nations. The big question though is, this is not the squad that will be there. So how crucial is this tournament in building up for AFCON? Yeah, absolutely. I think the players that are going to be at the AFCON are the players that uh, failed to come out of the group at last year's edition in Tanzania. Uh, so this time, uh, they brought youngsters. They are trying to pick a few players from uh, this team, uh, perhaps four or five players who distinguish themselves. And one of them is Fikru Tefera. Should be able to uh, join the rest who stayed at home in, uh, in Addis Ababa. Mm, it needs no more introduction. It is the biggest football comment on the African continent as we look at, at those Kenya fans who will be coming in suddenly to support Ethiopia. Of course, because of the rivalry that is there between Uganda and Kenya. Trust me, the Kenyan fans in the stadium do not want the defending champions to make it to the next round at this year's tournament so far. But then they will have nothing much to do with it because in January as well, they will be watching out for the biggest tournament, Ivory Coast. The elephants up against a Togo. That is also a West African derby, and that another West African derby. This time round, the Black Stars of Ghana will be up against Mali. All those games, of course, are live and exclusive here on your World of Champions. And look out for this one: the Super Eagles up against the Chipolo Polo. The defending champions of the African continent will be in action as well, trying to make sure they can win it for the second time in a row. Now, 45 minutes is what we shall be watching first to separate the Uganda cranes from Ethiopia. Quick break. When we come back, you join me and Max Ali in the commentary box for what should be an intriguing 45.
Welcome to the Mandela National Stadium here in Nambole. The Sakafa Tusk Challenge Cup is on us in Kampala. Uganda up against Ethiopia, the fourth of the quarterfinals. I wonder if we have saved the best for last because the hosts are the last in action here. We saw two quarterfinals yesterday and we already had one earlier today. The Ugandans hoping to be the last of the teams to make it to the semi-finals, eventually hoping to be the team that defends the title they won last year. Ethiopia standing their way, these fans enjoying themselves, anticipating a route. Reality might be different, but try telling them they are the fans of the Uganda Cranes, used to winning on this ground, used to winning the Sekafa Challenge Cup. First things first, for it's a quarter final, after which there'll be two more games before they can even think of lifting a 13th title. The will sing and dance tonight. It's a good evening for football. And they are in fine voice. The Kenyans, their arch rivals from across the border, have already made it to the semi finals. At the expense of Malawi, and now they'll join Ethiopia to support the Ethiopians against Uganda. Uganda, of course, having supported Malawi in the first quarter final of the day. The Kenyans are returning the favor. But here we are. The two teams walk out of the tunnel. Being led by colorful youth in FIFA's fair play. Bana. Ethiopian colors, all too distinct here. Got a few in the stands themselves, a big Ethiopian community in Uganda. They'll be cheering on their teams. And here they come, Ethiopia and Uganda. Second time they face each other in this tournament. Uganda the victors by a narrow 1-0 margin in the group stages. We'll be looking to do the double on Ethiopia. Not too often that you see that at major tournaments. In fact, Uganda's coach Bob Williams of the World Wary of making the same team in this tournament. But he'll have to make do with the opposition presented to him. These Ugandan players will be hoping to put one over Ethiopia. And here's the team that they have asked to do it. Hamza Mwonga is in goal. They've brought back the same starting lineup for outfield players that started the tournament against Kenya. Only the goal changes, but outfield is the same people. Dennis Ikuma, Kofi Alusibi, Azaki Tchida and Henry Kalunji are actually the four men at the back. And Robert Sentongo joins Hamis Keys and Prano Moni up front because Emmanuel Oki has lost out. The three-man midfield in this 4-3 lineup is Jeffrey Chisito, Moses Oloya and Hassan Waswa. And here are the men they face. Samson Asfau in goal, Mokes Tadese, Giran Bekele, Yared Zinabu, Merin Mena, the back line. Fikru Tefera Lamese is the man who stands out in this Ethiopian side. He is the captain, the leader of the line, the inspiration for this team from the Horn of Africa.
Hall, the national anthem of the hosts Uganda. And the Uganda cranes will know they have the most funds here. But the big question is, can they repay the faith put in them by the hundreds of funds that have come here? So then these are the two options on the bench for both sides. Ali Chimera does go back to the bench after starting in the last game. Joseph Pachaya, the left, the, uh, the left winger, is uh, on the bench as well alongside Emmanuel Okwe, Saidi Cheyne, and the likes of Bran Madrega, and Ethiopia, Robel Girma. Abraham Abebe and of course Chala Deliba who's already had an appearance at this year's tournament including who should be the elite striker Jonathan Kabede will be coming off the bench Jonathan Kabede's uh, exclusion from the opening 11 has surprised many in the region but uh, at the end of the day it comes down to Sayum Kabede the head coach of this Ethiopian side and what he thinks of his starting 11 in games like these ones those are the men with pedigree in the region. If winning this tournament is anything to go by, and they know they are the team everyone wants to beat, as a Thierry Nkuruziza will be the man at the center alongside Muhammad Idam, Peter Sibasia, and of course Muhammad Er Fadir as the fourth official in today's game. All the officials will make sure we have an incident free game in a tournament that so far has no red card and that is the man who is a surprise inclusion in the starting 11 for the Uganda Cranes today Brian Omon will be partnering the new man Robert Sentongo top scorer in the Bell Ugandan Super League last season and he knows he'll be getting lots of support from this man on the wing but this is the author of the tactics for the Uganda Cranes Robert Williamson popularly known as Bobby here in Kampala and he's against this man, Sayom Kabede, for the Ethiopian head coach. And still the big question on every fan's mouth now is, will we see a surprise? Can Ethiopia take the Uganda cranes out of this one? We've seen a couple of those already, things like Zanzibar, and this is with all respect to the nations here. We're not uh, favorites to even make the semi-finals, but trust me, they will be in the final four. So we look at some of the Ethiopian fans here at the stadium. But the players themselves, they know this is a good moment for them to make sure they can come in and uh, confirm their superiority in the region. And uh, there will be lots and lots of pressure on these two sets of players. The fans will bite their nails at some point, you can be very sure. Well, at least uh, unless we see lots and lots of goals in the opening here minutes. Thierry Nkuruziza, all the way from Burundi, is the man who will be deciding this one. So it's kickoff time here at the Mandela National Stadium as both teams look to meet out with Tanzania in the semi finals. The winner in this game will take on the Kilimanjaro Stars. And of course, do remember you have uh, options when it comes to commentary in today's match. You can listen to Bruce Tudiawabona in the English commentary box. All you have to do is go to the language option, that is the button on your remote, and you can pick out either one of two or two of two. And that is what the World of Champions is all about. We do give you options every time we give you plus matches like this one. So then Mark, Sally of course does join me in the commentary box. This is a game not any of these two sides wants to lose or even draw points in. They absolutely. It's the last of the quarterfinals. They know the three teams have made it already. Don't want to be the ones to miss out. One of them is going to have two, and it's going to be very, very tight here. Of course, Uganda, the favorites coming into the game, having beaten Ethiopia, playing on a home turf for which they don't lose, and also being supported by a vociferous crowd. They've got some quality in there as well, but 
don't get me wrong, Ethiopia are a very plucky side. Little to lose for them, they are the underdog here. We've already seen one underdog upset the odds. Zanzibar overcoming Burundi at Logoko yesterday. So Ethiopia, I mean, the second team to do that. Be wary, Uganda. Oh, uh, Uganda Cranes last losing on this ground back in uh, 2004. That was against South Africa in an African Cup of Nations qualifier. Right, the big question will be can Ethiopia break that record here? Bye bye, Ethiopia. We wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Early messages coming in from the Uganda Cranes fans. They seem very sure they will go on and win this match. But uh, we've seen how cruel football can be sometimes. Anything can happen. And uh, the Ethiopian fans will not enroll to that allegation. They know they have a chance in this one. A couple of changes are being made by Bobby Williamson, a man who did start the tournament. Uh, Joseph Ochaya playing for Santi Kotoko in Ghana does drop the bench. And now Mark, who stands in that left position yeah he's gone for 4-3-3 when he started Ochaya against Ethiopia it was in a 4-4-2 Ochaya wide on the left Oloya wide on the right he had on the two midfielders in Tisto Baba and uh, Hassan Waswa so he played the two-man striking force that time Emmanuel Oki and uh, Brian Omoni is starting out now he's gone back to the 4-3-3 he used against Kenya in the opening game that means Ochaya drops to the bench he goes back to a three-man midfield Baba and uh, all uh, and uh, Oloya and Hassan Waswa. So the three-man uh, start, starting lineup is pretty obvious. Sentongo joining Amis Kiza. And the big shock for this uh, Ethiopian side is that Jonathan Kabede does drop the bench as well. Uh, he's been looked at as their lead striker. So lots of changes being made by uh, Seyum Kabede, uh, the head coach over this Ethiopian side. It's all in the good uh, of the nation. He knows uh, a couple of tactical changes. Maybe it could give him the upper hand here. There he is on your screen now. Sayum Kabede, very experienced the manager. And of course, uh, he is uh, fifth second to Fido. He will not be the man leading them uh, to the Africa Cup of Nations in January, but uh, he's been handed the responsibility of making sure Ethiopia can pick something here in uh, Kampala. Something uh, the Harambe Stars of Kenya have done as well. Michelle Michael uh, is not the man who has been uh, sent here by the national side. Instead, it's James Nandwa. So a couple of changes being made by uh, the different... Uh, Federations as they get a crazy now try to push with the lawyer running into the box. He's got a goalkeeper beat. Chance here for Brian Amon. Still chance for Baba Kizito. And the Uganda Cranes have opened the scoring here. The defending champions, the hosts, are leading by the attack. That is the goal they have been looking for. And the man who's playing his fifth competitive game for the Uganda Cranes has scored his third goal. Godfrey Kizito, popularly known as Baba, has sent the fans into a frenzy here. But what a run from Moses Oloya. The creator-in-chief of the Uganda Prince is at it again. Maisy run, feeds Amon. Amon can't find a way through, but Kizito Baba can. It's a long shot. There's a, a forest of legs here. The goalkeeper is unsighted. By the time he sees it, it's in the back of the net. Uganda opened the scoring, and that's exactly what the doctor ordered. Oh. What a start, fourth minute, and Baba Kizito is already having one of the next second year at the Mandela National Stadium. And with just a couple of minutes in the second quarter final of the day here, is the Uganda Cranes 1, Ethiopia nil. And now Ethiopia will have a mountain to climb. Because they do not only take on a team with lots of pedigree in the region, they also take on a team that has the lead and most fans here in the stadium. Big, big mountain this one, Mark. Can they bring back some glory for the Ethiopian side? Well, a bit of deja vu if you ask me for the Ethiopians. They conceded early in that group game. Uh, Brian Omoni opening the scoring again from a, a similarly messy run, um, which created it for, for him. You thought the flat gets had open, but you were wrong if you did, because Ethiopia closed out shop and then attacked Uganda and tried to get back in there. Eventually, Uganda hung one at the end. I wonder though if this time um, the boot is different and, the, um, and uh, Uganda have actually opened the flat gets. We'll see. Well, they say one of the worst minutes in matches is when you've just scored. Uh, there seems to be a scuffle on the pitch between. Uh, they should have been captain of the Uganda Cranes, uh, Godfrey Walusimbi. 
doesn't seem to be a very, very happy at the moment uh, with Girma Bekere Debele. And the Fikru Tefera, the captain, does come in. This is uh, the challenge that talking about uh, challenge coming in from the likes of Hamis Diego Kiza and uh, the man Moges Tedese Bogale. These are kind of reactions you don't want early on in matches, Mark. Yeah, and, and, and it's silly from Marusi, but there's no reason he should do that. His team has taken the lead early. Why is he going into a challenge where he is clearly not going for the ball, but the man? If the referee sees that, he goes into the book for yellow, and it's totally unnecessary right now to hand momentum back to Ethiopia when they've just taken it. And uh, this is uh, the challenge on the midfield, Dynamo Panam. Uh, been brought down that is uh, Gotochi Panam Yitech very crucial for this Ethiopian side at the center of the park uh, that Ethiopia will know it's chances like this they need in matches like these ones to get back on level terms but can they they do face Hamza Mwonge a couple of options for them one of those of course is the elite striker Mamo Elias he scored a cracker here of a goal Probably contender of goal of the tournament already in their last game. But this time round, he couldn't get past the wall that has been set up by Hamza Mwonge as the cranes push forward now. Here is Moses Oloya. He's uh, made himself a nuisance every time he moves forward, which of course is good news for the cranes. And Ethiopia now know we have a very big battle to deal with. Yassin Asala. Trying to twist and turn. Possession lost by Abdurakim Hussein Yigema. Emmanuel Okui, one of the scorers of the Uganda Crane side, not starting today. And I'm thinking, Mark, most of the fans now will quickly forget that fact. Yeah, it's, he's, he's had an indifferent tournament, Okui, by his standards, very high standards. And uh, he's paid the price today by dropping to the bench. But what that means is that you've got three out and out strikers not very comfortable with the ball at their feet in wide areas. So you have a 4 3 3, but, uh, but uh, Omoni, Amis Kiza, and Sentongo are not comfortable, which is why Oloya becomes very important in this team. He's the creator in chief, two holding midfielders behind him in Nababa and Hassan Waswa. So he thrives in that midfield role, even if he's a natural wide player. Oh, good analysis. That one from Max Salid. Very clear tactics as well uh, that Bobby Williamson has been bringing into this game. But can they mature probably to have the Uganda Cranes make it to the last four? As Hamis Diego Kiza quickly loses position to Panom. The Uganda Cranes get it back. There is Isaac Isinde. Any fans of the Uganda Cranes will tell you is uh, one of the best penalty takers they have seen. Isaac Isinde. Do you remember this game? ends uh, in a draw by 90 minutes we shall have the spot kicks and uh, he'll be one of those players they'll be looking out for to give uganda a chance this out of the four quarter finals only one spot kick has been realized as all are trying to twist and turn here quickly losing position at the center of the park good work as well from mena meldelcho the fans are bringing a very good atmosphere here at the mandela national stadium they are screaming at every attack, attack the Uganda Cranes are making in this game. And uh, you keep wondering how much of an effect that will have on this Ethiopian side. They have their fans as well, though. They do, and they're loud, and they're being helped out by Kenyans uh, the, from the Harambe Stars uh, support brigade. But the Ugandans are much louder, the decibel levels are much, much higher, and clearly the, the, the Cranes team is feeding off that on the pitch. A bit contagious, if you like. Well, as it stands, the Uganda Cranes will know they have a chance. But Ethiopia, no, lots of time is still on their hands as well. Here they come now trying to move forward. Fikru is one of the targets up front. This is stretched as far as Salah. Up against Dennis Iguma. Salah does well to keep possession of this one. But can he find options? He can't. Still testing and turning. And uh, that gives them uh, the latest throw in. Tony Siguma, one of the makeshift defenders Bobby Williamson has brought to this tournament. Known to be a central defender with uh, both AC Villa and Victoria University. But uh, this time round, he starts on the right. Which means uh, Simeon Masaba. 
Well, no, he's got lots of competition. Chances now for Ethiopia to cross this into the box. Good shot as well. That was good spacing from Abdurakim Hussein Yegemo. And this was taken by Elias Mamo. He's already scored a couple of crackers of this tournament. And that was a good chance for them as well, Mark. Yeah, this is great delivery from the wide areas. Evades all the Ugandan defenders. And Elias Mamo, who scored arguably the goal of the tournament against Kenya, that 3 1 loss, is trying to replicate that same strike. Lightning doesn't strike twice, but it almost did there. <laughs> wow, you've got to love this tournament. It's only at this tournament that actually Lightning can come twice uh, pretty much in the same spot. And uh, trust me, we could be bracing ourselves for a cracker of a strike as uh, we look at Salah. Man who did not start the tournament but uh, has been brought in since the opening game by Sayun Kabede. Talk about improving and uh, being recognized by your head coach. Panom stretches this out wide looking for Medelcho who takes a long one looking for Fikru Tefera. That's Wall tries to keep this under control. And uh, quickly the goal scorer comes in with an interception here. Now Hamis Diego Kiza looking for Baba Godfrey Kizito. But Panom once again, we've talked about how crucial he is for the men in green and yellow. And uh, he keeps showing that every time he gets a touch on the ball. As that's a foul that does come in. When Godfrey Walusimbi, most of the fans still wondering how Godfrey Walusimbi could turn down the captain's armband. He was given the option by Bobby Williamson, but he said, no, I won't take it. Yeah. He was given to Hassan Waswa. Yeah, and I think he preferred not to put, the not to put himself under pressure. Some people take up the armband and it affects their game in the wrong way. Of course, unofficially, he told one or two people that he wasn't happy. They didn't consult him before making the decision. Now I wonder if he regrets it. Who would not want to lead his country out on a night like this? Especially if it's uh, the Uganda Cranes. Well, if I had my playing boots up to now, I'd probably be excited to lead the Uganda Cranes out of the tunnel. But uh, unfortunately, I didn't make it that far. But Mark, you did. You played at this high level, of course, of the competition. And you know what pressure of the captain is like. I know, I know what you're talking about. You talked to my old coach. You had your doubts. But now my old coach has proved a few things to you. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying. Can't be blowing my trumpet on a day like this. Far much more talent on the pitch than I ever managed. And uh, these guys are doing, uh, well, they have national flags proud. Not just the Ugandans, the Ethiopians too. I think they've had a good tournament. This is a push forward looking for Robert Sentongo. It's a couple of uh, centimeters off the ball. Long ball coming in from that right wing. And this could have ended anywhere as well, Mark. Yeah, if it traps it, Sentongo. He's got the goalkeeper to beat and the goalkeeper is at his mercy. Uh, he stretched out that... Uh, left boot of his and the ball was well beyond him but it's a good change of tactic if you want to pass your way through um, opposition uh, they, might, they will figure you out eventually but if you keep twisting and turning if you turn it around if you change things around long ball here short pass there you're bound to catch them and the Uganda Cranes doing well to keep possession in a silk way as well they are keeping that ball now and doing a good job to make sure this Ethiopian side has no chance when it comes to having the ball itself. And because of that, that man is not happy. Sayim Kabede is wondering why can't we keep the ball as well and instead going on to foul players like Godfrey Walusimbi. He's had a couple of knocks in the opening 15 minutes here, uh, the left back for Uganda. Yeah, that time taken out by Walter Bayane. Bayane, a much bigger player than Walusimbi. But don't be fooled, Walusimbi is not to be bullied. He can hold his own, the little man. Waswa flips this into the box straight to the goalkeeper. Uh, the Samson Absawoko quickly comes off his line. One of the players uh, that could actually make their way to South Africa with uh, the Ethiopian squad as one of the reserve goalkeepers. And uh, you get to think he's got to do more in this game to impress the coach even more. Here is uh, the goal creator, Oloya, having a tricky chip on up front, looking uh, for the man he gave the ball to score. Baba Kizito, Godfrey. The Uganda Cranes taking the lead and controlling the position here at the moment. How crucial was that early goal for them, Mark? 
very crucial. It settles the nerves if there are any. I don't think the Prince uh, should come out of here with nerves against any opposition on this pitch, especially in this region. But it's bound to happen every once in a while because uh, the burden of expectation was on them. Now you get an early goal like that, and you just settle into a zone. Fikro Tefera is the latest man to be brought down and gets himself a free kick. He's captain for the Ethiopian side. 17 minutes gone and uh, the players are already sweating showing you how much they are running. Four. Okay, there's four fouls so far for both sides. And that man we've been talking about, he's been hit on almost every attack they kind of crates have had. And uh, this same round, he's complaining to the captain, Fikru. This is the challenge, then. Yeah, they've been hard on Olusimi. I don't think they're picking him out. They've, he's not been singled out. He's not Uganda's playmaker or the focal point by any uh, stretch of imagination. It's just that the ball has gone to his side quite a bit. And the Ethiopians, of course, are desperate to get it back. Salah. He's good out position and also gets himself a free kick of... Uh, the goal scorer, Godfrey Babak is the good flick this coming again. All the way, of course, uh, from Mamo Elias. He's trying to find his captain, Fikru. It's a good game reading as well from Henry Kalunji. Bobby Williamson emphasizing the fact that he needs to bring in younger players into the cranes. But for now, he's got to focus on this tournament. Whoever gets past this stage, we'll check on the Tanzania side that has had a great tournament as well, Mark. They've been fantastic, the Kilimanjaro Stars. From the, from the time they beat Sudan in the opener to the way they took Rwanda apart yesterday in the first quarter final, they've been superb. So whoever wins the game here has got, have got their work cut out in the semi finals because the Kilimanjaro Stars will be waiting. Fresh and very, very inspired. Many will tell you that is the final before the final, but of course that would be an insult to, of course, uh, both other semi-finalists, that is uh, Kenya and Zanzibar. Uh, so you have to say two big semi-finals, whoever gets past this stage. And of course everything will be live and exclusive here on your World of Champions. Panom. Taking it straight here, looking uh, for a wall de Bayene. And uh, controlling clearly that position 63% and 54% overall. Ethiopia haven't had that much time to settle into play because every time the cranes get the ball, they try to push forward. And on a couple of occasions, this Ethiopian side has been forced then to try and soak in the pressure from the men in yellow. Michele Debele. Doing a good job on Hamisa Diego Kiza. One of those players who hasn't had a lot of playing time with a senior crane side. We're doing a good job in the Vodacom Premier League in Tanzania with uh, Yanga. And he'll be hoping it's a tournament like this that can fully usher him in Bobby Williamson's thoughts. As Wallace takes a long one into the box and the goalkeeper. Hassan Walker quickly coming off his bench. Williamson making it very clear that uh, being defending champions and hosts uh, gives them a chance. But he did tell me he doesn't think that will count today. What, what exactly was he talking about now? Well, very experienced as a coach, he knows that every game has got a different complexion to it. And that records and stats don't play for you. You've got to go out there on your stripes. And if you don't if you begin to take things for granted, we could get shocked, we could be embarrassed. It's a good attitude for the coach to have because that means his players are not taking things for granted. As we see, uh, been, uh, Gatochi Panom taken out here. Well, it was him that was challenging. The leggy, the leggy midfielder, of course, just a naturalized Ethiopian. You can tell clearly uh, he's not uh, uh, born and bred, if you like. More from the South Sudan than from Addis. Very, very good midfielder has done well at this tournament. Yeah, he's done a good job suddenly in uh, putting those passes together for this uh, Ethiopian side. And uh, he's one of the players the Uganda Cranes will be looking to always stop every time. Moves forward. Salah trying to bring this into the box. Is late dealt with by Henry Kalunji. And now Ethiopia trying to keep possession. Panom 
pushing it forward looking for Fikru. That goes straight to Hamza Monge. One of the goalkeepers that knows he has a chance. So then this is what is on on Thursday, the first of the two semi-finals. As Zanzibar will be taking on Kenya, 1600 East African time. Crack how the match this should be. As the Uganda Cranes now move forward, can they have chances? Chance to shoot! It's a good chance uh, from uh, Hannes Diego Kiza. And uh, Bobby Williamson does not seem excited by the strike the younger striker has brought in. This is a good chance for Uganda Cranes to double the advantage. Yes, Sedogo played really well. Takes it off his chest and then uh, juggles it and sets it up. Hannes Kiza. Does not set himself up and uh, miscues that. More bemused than disappointed, Bobby Williamson. I don't think um, he will be um, chastising his, his player there because, uh, as it is now, I don't think there's that much pressure on him. He's probably wondering how can you strike the ball like that, Hamis Diego Kiza. But uh, probably pressure having its own say in matters here. They got a crane. Here is Robert Center on now twisting and turning at the center of the park. Loses out to Gatochi. And then what should have been a counter-attack is a fold by Isaac Isinde here. The battle of tactics. Sayum Kabede against Bobby Williamson. Lots of experience between the two tacticians. And of course, uh, have a match. Kabede is looking for his first Sekafa Championship. Bobby is looking for his fourth. Polusimbi, straight to the midfield. And the crane still trying to build. And now Robert St. is coming more and more into the midfield. Is this because of the pressure now the Ethiopians are piling on? A bit of that, but in all honesty, if you play a 4-3-3, and you've got three other out strikers. One of them has got to drop deep and help out the midfield. Now, Sentong, well, that's not his natural role. It's not what he thrives on. But if, if uh, Hamis Kiza and Brian Amoni are not going to be doing it, and I don't think they fancy themselves there as well, he's going to, which is why uh, Emmanuel Oki should be the preferred choice under those circumstances. But his form has let him down. Here, they come now, the Uganda Cranes. Moses Olaya has been uh, a good customer for the Uganda Cranes on uh, that right wing. And who has played professional football in Vietnam. Criticized on a couple of occasions for being lazy. But in this game, he hasn't shown anything close to that. He's had lots and lots of running. As we see some discomfort here for Mena Meldelcho. Yeah, lawyer. This is brilliant footwork from the young man. But then his attempted cross hits Mena Meldelcho right in the nether region. It's uh, painful, trust me. I know. They always called it the midrift, was it? Is midrift, that... yeah. Midsection. <laughs> Another region. A couple of times you've come in with uh, uh, the maybe your biological Try. teacher has to be called in this now. Try me and uh, trust me, there's a few where that came from. Oh. Let's focus on the football now because I wouldn't want uh, more details from uh, uh, Max is getting all his terms here as they kind of cranes. Now try to break forward. Robert Santongo trying to find uh, space in this Ethiopian back line and these are chances any good and sharp striker will take Mark. Yeah, he's, uh, he's trigger happy, we know that. He's not been top scorer in the league in Uganda for several years uh, by not being trigger happy. He's not got that on target but trust me, every time he comes in and around that area and the ball, ball bubbles up, he will take a hit. You remember the goal he scored against South Sudan was that opportunistic. Fikru trying to push forward now good move this by Ethiopia they've got an option one of those is Salah and uh, quickly Henry Kalunji comes uh, to the rescue of the Ugandans good movement uh, from uh, Moges Tedese Bogale but uh, Henry Kalunji also trying to replace Ibrahim Sekaja in this back four for the Uganda Cranes oh doing a good job at the moment and now Hamza Mwonge will be under the spotlight as Ethiopia take their first corner Four green shots in the box. Can this ball find any of those? As Fikro rises, led out by Henry Kalonji as far as Moses Oloya. Uganda Cranes looking for a counter attack here, and uh, Robert Sentongo is fully isolated at the moment. We talked about the rewards of making the final. 
all the semi final because it's not just pedigree, it's just a lot of money. Three times uh, probably the money that was given out a couple of times ago, and uh, now you have about uh, thirty thousand dollars that will be given out for whoever goes on to win this championship. That is good money enough, man. Yeah, that's uh, incentive enough to be honest. In this region, thirty thousand dollars will go a long way, but whatever it is that the National Federation decides to do with it, whether I give it to the players. Uh, sink it into football development or set up administrative costs, whatever it is, it will come in handy for the winner. There's uh, Abdurakim Hossein, one of the players that have been targeted by uh, this uh, Ethiopian side every time they move forward. And uh, Yasin Salah is the man brought down. We talk about his improvement. Uh, now Ethiopia have swung into the Lydia in possession. But still, of course, uh, a couple of uh, figures behind when it comes to the overall position here. So, good spell for Ethiopia then. They are settling into the game and that early goal has done them really, really bad. Yeah, so reminiscent of what happened between these two teams in the group stages. Uganda started like a house on fire. But when the Ethiopians settled in, they began to dominate. They are a possession team in this region. Very few teams can outpass them. They had to figure out exactly what Uganda was throwing at them because a 4-4-2 they used in the group phase has turned into a 4-3-3 today. But now they know. Good chances uh, for the Uganda cranes as they push forward. Uh, Robert Sentongo was the man uh, was trying to move forward but quickly taken out by uh, Samson Absad Wonko. Challenge is flying in as well. And the Ethiopia know they must not concede the second here before the halftime break. Because then that puts them in a whole a new position. One of the smallest leads always have in football as well. A simple goal could change the entire atmosphere in this game, Mark. Yeah, certainly. It's never won if it's a one-goal margin. Never won until the final whistle. So many things happen. It's the simple goalkeeping error. Like we've seen, we saw a couple of terrible ones from the goalkeeper of Rwanda, Jean-Claude Ndoli. He made one against Tanzania yesterday in the quarters. He'd made one in the group stages against Zanzibar, if you remember, when he completely missed the ball here at Nambole. But the, the one yesterday, when he spilled the ball for Boko to score, was actually at Lugogo. So that kind of error from Hamza Mwongi and Ethiopia back in it. Well, Ethiopia trying to build now on both wings, looking for their captain, Fikro Lemesa, twisting and turning. Three yellow shirts around him. Does wall keeps possession. And this comes back to the midfield. Igemo. Ethiopia now slowly and gently trying to build and find that all important equalizer. Panom, one of the men challenging. And now the Uganda cranes look to break. Here is Brian Omon. He's got options on the right and options on the left. He goes up for the right where a lawyer is. Good movement into the box as Omon is through. Oh! That is as close as the Uganda cranes have gone since scoring the opener. And Brian Omon knows he could have doubled Uganda's advantage. Is it in two minds here? Does he want to pass? Does he think he's offside? He is not offside, but sometimes players are guilty of making the call instead of the referee. And this fan cannot believe his eyes. Brian Omon, three goals to the good here. Top scorer at the scuffer before should be getting a fourth there. Oh, he knows, and his reaction is very evident. He knows that was a close chance. This man is not happy at how easily the Ghana cranes are breaking forward past his own back line. Good game of football so far. 29 minutes gone here, and uh, it's been end to end stuff. Ethiopia having their own say. Might have considered uh, in the fourth minute. But since then, they have shown why they are in the quarterfinals at this year's tournament. The Uganda Cranes themselves must be feeling the pressure now. To never rule out the advantage of taking a lead in matches like these ones. Of course, uh, the Uganda Cranes uh, won't be with Joseph Mpande and Abel Daira. Abel Daira having uh, an injury here in the opening game and a rush to one of Uganda's uh, most popular hospitals, the Milago Hospital, and uh, he was released later in the evening. Bob Williamson telling me that uh, he's fine now, but just can't come back to the tournament. Sayom Kabede, always optimistic, but uh, besides chances. And I think the players have done a pretty good job in trying to make sure 
is a comfortable tactician on the bench. Justin Mark, you haven't seen that many goals at this year's tournament, but you've got to say the level of play has way, way improved. Teams that so many uh, pundits have considered as smaller sides have come here and showed us actually what they can do. Absolutely. Somalia being the exception there. Shipping five goals against Burundi and then another seven against Tanzania. That was 12 in two. Uh, they really did not do themselves justice. The other teams have done well. South Sudan for, at a major tournament for the first time ever. Having come here, having played only two internationals. One official, one unofficial. As they get the cranes now try to break away with Robert Sentongo. Also struggles to keep his feet on the ground. Does well, keeps possession and brings it back to the midfield. Godfrey Walusimbi floats this into the box. The target is Brian Omoin and uh, Moses Saloya there. Just keep, uh, he's going to keep it that one down and uh, he will be getting himself a corner kick. And he's discussing tactics probably, suggesting uh, some of the players could have done it differently. It's been said football fans uh, are the best football players. <laughs> Because, of course, uh, most of their tactics are discussed verbally. But uh, put a couple of those out there and you will see what tactics are all about. Seems to be a battle in the penalty area here as Uganda gets a chance to bring this into the box. Thompson Walker is quickly off his line. And uh, the flag was up on offside. This is a brilliant back heel, no offside there. But you can see Brian Amon is only struggling to get back on side. And then when the cross comes in, then he is offside. Even if he hadn't been, you would suspect the referee would have blown for an infringement on the goalkeeper. They are protected in that area, aren't they? Oh. Those fans at the moment know Ethiopia needs a, a happy Christmas and a happy new year. If for that poster is anything to go by, they're saying we are the best in the region. Of uh, placards we've seen at this year's tournament. Including one that was brought here by uh, the South Sudanese fans suggesting uh, that we are new and we are here to surprise you all. Well, they didn't do that, but uh, you've got to say they had lots of experience they learned from this kind of tournament, Mark. A new nation playing only three international games against the region is the best sides. That is a good lesson, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure they can't wait for their next international because now they've had a test of it. They'll want more of it. As we see, Denis Goma, we know he doesn't take no prisoners. Sometimes he lives on the edge. Uganda's right back. This is floated forward, looking for Fikru Lemesa. Hassan was the captain clears. He has far as the back lane, and uh, Robert Santongo is one of the chasing Ugandan players there. Good spell of pressure when it comes moving forward. To Uganda Cranes now. Brian Omon, scorer of the double. Already at this year's tournament. Three goals is go to his name already. But he'll be rated as Uganda's hottest striker at this year's tournament. And of course, the likes of John Boko for the Kilimanjaro Stars have already scored five times. Yeah, he's the goal scorer, Baba. Trying to find space, but the ball was always raising. The man who's made a name for himself in that yellow shirt. He'd come in as an experimental player in Ondola for the Uganda Cranes against Zanzibar and since then he's made himself a first team fixture. Absolutely, one of the first names on the team sheet when Bobby uh, calls it out, Papa has been outstanding in every game he's played for the Cranes. Here, he's even turned himself into a goal scorer. We knew him as a holding midfielder with a good pass. Now he's already scored twice here. Remember he got the win against Kenya, that header in the opening game and he's already scored again today. Iguma. Uganda Cranes trying to push forward. This time well intercepted and the man who did the good job was Yared Zinabu Shwatir. So there seems to be an injury on Yusuf uh, Yasin Salah. It does not seem comfortable. I don't want to risk head injuries at a tournament like this one. Yusuf Yasin Salah, one of the players brought into the tournament. This is an elbow straight to his face from Henry Kalunji. The, uh, the defender, the big central defender from Uganda is actually using the, the, the Ethiopian to climb uh, to high heights there. But obviously, Yasin Salah didn't like it one bit. Kalunji and you see they're not tested too much, the central defenders, uh, Andrew. 
in this tournament and in this game. Not as outstanding as the Kenyan pair we saw earlier, Joaquin Zotada, Batudo and uh, uh, David Owino. Or even the Tanzanians, Kapombe and Jordan. Oh, the cranes here. Will uh, probably try to learn from uh, those central pairings because, like you said, they, they have more experience than uh, uh, Isaac Isinde and, of course, uh, Henry Kalunji in terms of playing matches together. So maybe the Gander's pairing will try and learn something in this very case. Now, Ethiopia trying to break forward, looking uh, for their options up front. One of those being uh, Salah, which is intercepted once again by the goal scorer. He is running his hat out, Godfrey Baba Kizito. He is trying to justify why Bob Williamson puts him in this team. And uh, this is the latest challenger on Ethiopia. He doesn't seem very comfortable as well. Yeah, that is uh, now that is one for which Walusimbi should go in the book. And if you ask me, I think there's a bit of retaliation from Walusimbi here. He's been taken out two or three times by Ethiopians, but he's the one who started it. So there's a bit of hunky punky going on up there. Mogas Tades Bagal is the latest of Walusimbi's victims. But now, if I didn't think they were singling him out at the beginning, I'm thinking they're going to be doing that after the latest of his. Uh, challenges yeah this is floated into the box that helps them longer quickly off his line so then uh, we could have uh, a man-to-man -man battle on that left flank if uh, the latest challenge is anything to go by because uh, godfrey walusimbi and uh, bogale seem to be going at each other you only wish uh, they keep uh, their composure because then uh, you could very easily see cards and cautions here coming in at the Mandela National Stadium. Salah. Trying to do good work with the ball, but quickly loses out in possession. Uganda Cranes now trying to move forward. And Brian Omon is quickly uh, taken out by Bekele Debele of uh, the two central defenders for this Ethiopian side here. Strong on the ball and in the challenge as well. Fikru. The Cranes uh, know they have uh, this game within their control now. However slim their chances as this is a good striker right from the midfield. One is Diego Kiza. Those strikers that are competing for positions in the Cranes team. And they've got Sebo Williamson has lots of options at his exposure now. Oh yes, he does. We know that Geoffrey Massa is not here, one of the lead strikers, first names on the team sheet if he comes and plays. We know that Emmanuel Okuki has fallen out of favor temporarily at this tournament. Hamis Kiza, given the opportunity to come and do something, he already scored against South Sudan, as you saw, under pressure to do so again. Last shot was speculative, really hopeful more than anything so that is uh, uh, more confirmation of uh, the situation here at the Mandela National Stadium uh, they get a cranes leading uh, by a goal to nil this is uh, what separates both sides good work from uh, Oloya Brano Moin tries to take a shot and Godfrey Baba Kizito finding the back of the net for the cranes here Ali strike it has uh, been uh, for the cranes and uh, that makes it uh, three goals for him when it comes uh, to scoring chats here, something of course that has ex excited both the fans and Bobby Williamson. He knows how crucial that goal will be to his career with the Cranes. But uh, he's doing even much better in terms of defensive work. Bobby Williamson using uh, both the goal scorer Godfrey Kizito and Hassan Waso, the captain, to almost do both defensive work and attacking work as we look at Ethiopia here bringing on. Uh, uh, that is Robel Tsega Gima. One of the players that many thought should have started this very much, but he does come off the bench and uh, replaces Panom. It seemed that to have an injury. But talking about two defensive players that the Bob Williamson is using, who also do attack. Absolutely. Uh, um, largely, Hassan Wasa sits in front of the back four. Baba starts out uh, partnering him, but he's the one has to link between uh, defense and attack. As a lawyer, he's charged with attack 
in a 4-3-3. When it uses a 4-4-2, it's totally different, uh, the approach. But Chizito Baba is the one who plays the box-to-box -box role as uh, Hassan Wasa sits in. Well, here is Chizito Baba, Godfrey, trying to push this forward. And that can only go as far as Samson Absawoko. He is making himself a popular player. As uh, Tanom here gets some treatment. One of the midfield kingpins and Ethiopia will know now uh, they have lost a great player at the center of the park here. What can they get back as Robert Sentongo tries to flip this uh, looking for Brian Omon. So four minutes so then the opening 45 here at uh, the Mandela National Stadium. Uganda Cranes having a good account of themselves as defending champions. This goes as far as uh, Hamza Mwonge. Chances will suddenly keep coming in for both sides as uh, Tsego is the latest to defend the rest of the back four. This is pushed forward. Fikru is always going to be the target for this Ethiopian side. On this occasion, Henry Kalunji standing tall. So, uh, Mark, now I've got to leave you and uh, have uh, some analysis uh, with Alan Sekamachi at halftime. I hope. Uh, can take us through uh, the remaining uh, <laughs> three or four minutes here as Ethiopia tried to break this into the box but cleared uh, by Isaac Isinde. Yes, Andrew, don't worry. I got your back. So, Ethiopia going in stature as the half war on. Uh, first running out of time to find that equalizer. It would be good if they could draw level before going into that dressing room, change the complexion of this game entirely. But here come Uganda in the meantime. Iguma. Low ball into the area, taken care of by the central defense of Ethiopia quite easily. Balusindi. Goes looking for Chizito Baba, can find him. And that should be a foul. And the referee agrees. Ethiopia, winners of this tournament on four different occasions would like to get a fifth as we take a look at this foul. Bekele Debele, their best defender at this tournament, upended. Clearly not happy with the referee. Uganda fouling all of 11 times against just the five for Ethiopia. And since that goal, not been comfortable Henry Kalunji on that occasion stopping them but Ethiopia want to start a quick one here there's Lemese going up in the air and Kalunji did not wait for his goalkeeper he want to take chances the big central defender so here comes the corner for Ethiopia can they draw level in swinger of the left boot Hamza Mwonge gets two fists with the goalkeeper you're gonna cleanse, get it away. Ethiopia forced to build from the back again, coming long. Nikoma looking for Amis Kiza, won't find him like that. Ethiopia. As we get into time added on, there's only two minutes on the clock. The seconds fast ticking towards half time. Here's the wow. That was more like the player tripping himself. I thought Iguma was up to his old dirty tricks. It was wrong. And now Ethiopia was very wide to the right. Walusimbi. In a tasso with Tadese. And again, they've got to be separated. 
Tadesse Bogale has been in the face of these Uganda Cranes players, tagging at Wallace Shimbis through trousers they wear. He came in really strong. It's a bit of retaliation to that. He and Wallace Shimbis have been going at each other since the game started. Somehow the referee has not seen that as a personal duel that is boiling over, but it is. The, they've lost the ball, Ethiopia, dilly-dallying around. Oloya chases, but the ball trickles far wide for a moment there. He could have had a shot on goal, but here is Oloya. And the cross comes in. Obonya is up there. That will go wide. Defensive error from Ethiopia, but they didn't get punished because the quality of the ball coming into Oloya was not good and Bobby Williamson must be disappointed with that. Understandably unhappy. Samson Asfar Woku, the goalkeeper of Ethiopia. And now the referee calls time on this half. Thierry Kruziza from Burundi. He's had enough here. Chizito Baba is the man who's got the call. Ghana Cranes take a narrow lead into half time. It's been a dramatic first half. Plenty of goal math action. The Ugandans threatened to run away with it after scoring early. Ethiopia have come back into it, made it competitive as they trudge to the dressing room. The Ugandans will converge on the pitch, have one last word. Plenty of action to come up here under the floodlights of Nambole because this is the last of the quarterfinals. The Ugandans hoping they can win because at halftime here, it's Uganda 1, Ethiopia 0.
fourth minute strike from Godfrey Baba Kizito is what separates the Uganda cranes from Ethiopia after the opening 45 minutes here at the Mandela National Stadium. So the mathematics is very clear as it stands. The Uganda Cranes will be making the semi-finals. But once again, if you do support Ethiopia, then football is such an honest game. You still have 45 more minutes to make sure you can get into uh, this game. I'm joined by Alan Sekamati. 45 minutes, as expected by most analysts, the Uganda Cranes are leading. The Uganda Cranes are leading without exactly playing a wonderful football. I think Ethiopia have acquitted themselves very well. Uh, they've hogged the position for long spells in the game. Uh, Uganda uh, Cranes, uh, their plays are very fractured, uh, but they do know how to find the goals. Slow start from Ethiopia. They were goal down, but they have come back into the game. Good play by them. Yeah, the notorious loss last as Ethiopia. You saw them in their 3-1 loss uh, to Kenya. Uh, they considered two goals in the opening 15 minutes of the game. And then in this particular one, uh, they uh, once again go behind in the opening five minutes of the game. So uh, they, they need to wake up. You know, that's, that might hurt them at the Africa Cup of Nations if they uh, don't start quickly. And how crucial is it for Ugandan chances that they go into those dressing rooms leading one new? It's very crucial, of course, uh, for the confidence of the players. But if I was uh, the coach, Bobby Williamson, I will try to uh, make that midfield a bit more compact. It's, it's much too porous. Uh, that's why Ethiopia are hogging the position and making uh, very many good runs. All right, let's quickly show you what exactly the opening 45 minutes has been like. Not so many highlights before the goal. Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, very good movement there from uh, Moses Oloya. Takes two men out of the... Uh, system. Then, of course, a uh, 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 wonderful goal there from uh, uh, Baba Kizu. It's his second goal of the tournament, and uh, that is uh, very good from the youngster. He's only broken into the national team uh, in the last few months. Mm, his name might be Godfrey Kizito, but he's popularly known by the fans here as Baba. And, of course, Baba meaning uh, father, is it? Yeah, for a father. Yeah, it could be father or just a pal, you know. Oh, <laughs> well, there you go. He's living up to his name as it stands. And Bobby Williamson uh, does know his side is comfortably in the lead. Yeah, but Ethiopia had a say as well. Yeah, that's right. That was a wonderfully uh, uh, crossed ball there. And uh, Elias Mamo, uh, very close to finding the, the back of the net. He just simply could not hit the target. Uh, but uh, good body shape there in uh, taking that shot. Mm, Hamza Mwonge, the lucky one. This ball was off a target, which means it still remained a clean sheet for him. The Ethiopian fans are not very excited, but Uganda could have doubled their advantage. Yeah, that's right. Uh, once again, uh, it is uh, Omoni who starts the move, uh, passes the ball to Moses Oloya. Moses Oloya back into the path there of Omoni. Omoni cannot find the target. Uh, but uh, that was a very, uh, very good move there from Omoni. Mm, you wonder if he thought uh, he was offside. And the fans also showing what they felt about that missed chance. Very discouraging. And Ethiopia <laughs> forcing Uganda into some miscommunication. Yeah, that's right. Miscommunication between the goalkeeper and the big central defender. Uh, very good direct running there from Ethiopia. But um, uh, Kalungi does stand tall. All right, then, one nil it is for the Uganda Cranes. A quick look at more statistics from the opening of 45 minutes. 54% of the possession for the men in a red. No yellow cards. Yeah, no yellow cards. Uh, seven shots on goal there for Uganda, one for Ethiopia. No shot on target for Ethiopia. The uh, strikers very shy in front of goal. Fikro Tafera, the boy who has been brought here to prove himself ahead of the nation's cap, will be in a lot of trouble because he really hasn't troubled Uganda. And uh, that's not the way of uh, breaking into the Ethiopian national team that will be traveling to South Africa. Mm, well, the statistics as well do suggest that they haven't had a shot on target, but uh, a couple of shots off target. Uh, maybe Ethiopia still has a massive say in what could happen in the second half. Yeah, that's right. If they can translate their good position and build up play into uh, shots on goal, because the goalkeeper, Hamza Mwongi, hasn't been worked so far in the opening 45 minutes. All right, who comes off the bench for the Uganda Cranes? Who comes off the bench for this uh, Ethiopian side? Because both coaches will be looking at to freshen a few issues when it comes uh, to the second half. Who comes off for Uganda? Uh, I would like to see Emmanuel Okui. Emmanuel Okui is a proven goal scorer in the region. Saidi Cheyune created two goals in uh, the 4-0 victory over uh, South Sudan. So those are two players I would like to see. Brian Madrigo, of course, has the speed. Then, of course, in Ethiopia, uh, they have uh, uh, Jonathan Kebede, who scored the goal against South Sudan. Uh, he, he does guarantee some attacking uh, options. All right, there you go. And of course, Saidi Cheyne and the likes of Brian Madrega also could have chances for the Uganda Cranes. Chala Deliba has already come on for this Ethiopian side. But the big question is, what must Bobby Williamson 
telling, be telling those players right now, go defend the lead or go out and let's get a comfort win. Go out and attack. Uh, you'd, uh, the best way to uh, win a football game is to keep attacking. Uh, if you sit back, you invite pressure on yourself. Uh, the Uganda Cranes have to attack more. They have to bring Moses Oloya more into the game because Moses Oloya, apart from creating the, the, the goal that is separating the two sides, has been largely anonymous. He hasn't had a kick. He's hugging the touchline. Must get closer to the central midfield. Let's look at Ethiopia's situation. They go out to attack. They leave so many spaces. They concede the second. Or they actually stay behind and can score. What do they do? They go and attack uh, because, I mean, uh, uh, they, they're not going to score a goal by sitting behind. Uh, there's nothing to protect. They're trailing by a goal to nil. They must throw that kitchen sink at the Uganda Cranes. Mm, and, of course, let's talk about the atmosphere in the stadium. The fans are making it very interesting, aren't they? Yeah, the fans are making it very interesting. Uh, very good voices there coming in from the fans. Whether it's the Ethiopian fans making the noise or the Uganda Cranes fans making the noise, it's a terrific atmosphere here. This is a battle for who becomes the king in the Sekafa region. But in January, it is a battle for who becomes the African king. It will be a real battle. A team that last won it back in 1996. South Africa will be up against Cape Verde in the opening game on the 19th of January. Make sure you book that date. And of course, the Chipolo Polo Zambia will be up against Ethiopia in yet another cracker. I've talked about this before. And I'll say these are the only representatives at the Nations Cup. Up Ivory Coast up against a Togo. So many think that is a mismatch, but it is a West African derby for so many of our folks down in West Africa. And all the action will be live and exclusive here on your World of Champions. Hygiene is one we've talked about throughout the tournament, and we are still advising you to go and wash your hands. Take a look ahead of the next 45. Great football, it takes two things. Fit players and fit fans. Play your part. Always wash your hands with soap before eating and after using the toilet. Wash United and Sea Kaffir working together to protect the beautiful game. Wash-United.org Welcome back to the Mandela National Stadium at Nambole. It is the Sekafa Tasca Challenge Cup. In case you didn't know it, 
and this is the last of the quarterfinals. Uganda up against Ethiopia, and the two teams set to do battle for 45 more minutes. The Ugandans have the lead, it's a slim one, and the Ethiopians will be looking to claw back. The two teams back on the pitch now, the fans in anticipation, the Vuvuzelas are out, the flags are flying, the Ugandans in fine voice for the Kenyan fans. Victors Alia over Malawi joining Ethiopians in providing some sort of vocal opposition. Colorful Ethiopian flags and beautiful fans. It's been a beautiful tournament in the terraces. It's been a beautiful tournament on the pitch. Ugandan fans quite loud today, been in the mood since the fight, first whistle, and of course buyered by that early goal scored by Chizito Baba, that's the Ugandan flag, unmistakable, and those fans there will be hoping that their team goes on to win, that's the man that scored the goal that separates the two sides, and here we are with that goal, Moses Oloya, danced into the box, but he got his shot blocked, Chizito Baba took his time, picked his spot, exploited the fact that the goalkeeper could not see until the very last second. So Bobby Williams celebrates and hopefully he and his boys can go on to, to wrap this one up. Ethiopia of course have other ideas and they've got plenty of time to change the tide. And this is one of the things they're going to do to try and do that make a change straight after Mesfin Kidane this man started the very first game Ethiopia played out this tournament has been on the bench since and you wonder why because he's one of clearly one of their more creative players so the last time uh, this Ethiopian side on nationals world beat the Uganda cranes was uh over two decades ago back in uh, 1995 well almost two decades uh, but this time around the Uganda Cranes will try to hold on to that statistic they know there's only one spot uh, in the semi-finals and there are two teams so the big question is who makes it out of this one and you can trust me we are going to have enough cracking second half because then it's very simple Ethiopia must come out and attack uh, the Uganda Cranes know they must defend their lead if not gone and increase it as well. Miss Finn Kidane Beyene, a quick substitution by this uh, Ethiopian side, and clearly Sayum Kabede is sending his intentions out there, Mark. Certainly, that is a sign of intent. Kidane, creative player, aggressive, goes forward, likes to take men on. And the next thing you hope. As this one comes in for the crates uh, and uh, it's Brandon Moyne was running uh, against that one. But well cleared as well. Good defending from Yareda Zinabu Shawatil. Give his side a chance and now the crates. So strike by the whistle had gone. Good strike from uh, Godfrey Kizito. But uh, the referee Thierry Nkurunziza had already blown his whistle. This is uh, the reason why that flag was up because then Abraham Moyne did stay up front and maybe it's a foul on Shawartil that the third official is talking about here. Not really very clear. And the whistle did go anyway. Two sides that have uh, lots and lots of respect in this region talked about how ethiopia was part of the first three sides to play an africa cup of nations that is uh, joining egypt of course and sudan back in 1957 nations cup that only had three sides then but the membership increasing year by year as they get a crane they try to break forward this is iguma trying to cross this into the box as they dealt with as well so then that alone makes ethiopia one of uh, the historical sides on the African continent and considering that they have been there 10 more times as well at uh, the biggest shoppies compared to a Ugandan side 
He last appeared there in 1978. So then when it comes to continental football, it is almost a mismatch. But when it comes to regional football, the Uganda Cranes are the kings. Why should Uganda dominate the, uh, the region, Mark? And go on to fail to dominate the continent. Isn't that something that the fans will continue asking uh, year in, year out? As uh, oh, the Cranes try to attack here is Oloya, twisting and turning. He's got options on his left. Now he has no option on his left because uh, Dennis Iguma has come in. And uh, the Uganda Cranes get themselves a free kick. It will be very important for the Cranes in the second half. He uh, ran himself with the cul de sac. And somehow he's come out good because he's won himself a free kick. Ethiopian defenders, if they know that a lawyer is going nowhere, should not be fouling him but zoning him out. So a player who was facing his corner flag is now going to swing the ball into their box. It's one of those fouls that coaches insist players should never make. But do they listen? Not on that occasion, they didn't. <laughs> oh, well, this time around, Ethiopian players did not listen to that simple instruction. And as a result, they have uh, got defending to do. You saw for Yassin Salah, one of the players in this wall. Can he keep this one out? Uganda Cranes throwing almost everyone apart from two shots. As this is floated in, they have got chances. Hamis Diego Kiza takes it back to Baba Kizito. Here is uh, Dennis Iguma. Still trying to break and find possession. The Uganda Cranes, here is Dennis Iguma. Now he's got some uh, defending and attacking to do as he tries to find space in the box. Two green shots around him though. And uh, Yared Zinabu Shawartil does clear this one. Here come the cranes again. Hamis Deokiza. Got from Alusimbi. Brian Omon. Twisting and turning does well. Keeps possession of the ball. Still running into the box. And uh, well, what was that mark? Was that a shot at goal or was it a shot for a throw in? It was an attempt at goal. Trust me, Brian Omon cutting inside seeing the opportunity and seizing it unfortunately his enthusiasm his zeal the hunger was not matched by quality of execution and that can be embarrassing with strikers almost ended up as a throw-in so we've talked about how we expect chances that to come in thick and fast in this second half and uh, this is the latest for ethiopia only for hamza mwonge to quickly come off his line stay on the ground but quickly gets up as well and Fikru Lemes has something still the referee I don't know what that is but is he complaining maybe there was uh... yeah what happens is that Hamza Monge comes off but he takes a knock from his own player Henry Kalonji uh, looks like Fikru has actually been punished with a free kick so he's saying I didn't go anywhere near him I didn't touch the brother It's a good chance now for the Uganda Cranes. Brian Omoy trying to break. Trying to find those spaces up front. But uh, once again, good defending uh, from Yared Zidabusho Artil. And uh, more chances for the Cranes, aren't they, Mark? Yeah, they are they're trying to go forward again here. But to be honest, they've not, they've, uh, as you see the fouls, that they've accumulated 13 to 9. Means that Ethiopia took over possession at some point. Kezito trying to find space in the box and that's not the best of crosses uh, you will see at this year's tournament Ethiopia did finish the first half very strong and now they seem to be on the back foot as the second half kicks off this is not what they want Mark they need to still keep pushing those balls forward absolutely usually take their time settling into games and take their time settling into halves they don't have that much time to be honest because this is not a group stage game where you can make amends later or in another it starts and ends here so they need to pick it up or they're going home Ethiopia Fikru trying to find spaces this is brought into the box and uh, oh very adventurous cross as well I mean one from the man who came off the bench Akidane Beyene right uh, not finding the target inside the area must find a man in green in that box it's Ethiopian side they have had a couple of crosses in the second half they might be struggling when it comes to keeping the ball so far as we get closer and closer to the hour mark here at the Mandela National Stadium 
So then as it stands, uh, Kenya will take on Zanzibar and uh, Uganda will take on Tanzania. That is as it stands. This game still has lots and lots of time to go. And uh, the second uh, semi-final fixture could very, very easily change. Of course, both games will be live on your World of Champions on Thursday. And uh, be very sure to watch those with our exclusive coverage of this very tournament. Ethiopia looking out for Bekele de Bele. Just in them where they are putting the ball too far when it's supposed to be pushed a little bit forward. And now here they come trying to build with the man who just came off the bench. Bejene back to defense. Short deal. Zenabu pushes this one forward. One of the targets, of course, is Elias Mamo, but doesn't quickly get to it. But Ethiopia do well in keeping the ball. Now they have lost position. Can they pay for this? Ranomonia and Robert Sentongo, the two options up front. They're being surrounded by four Ethiopian players. It's a good defensive tactic. A good first touch from Hamis Kiza. Upended for his efforts. Ethiopia frustrating Uganda's attacks here. Clearly they'd like to kill off the game, but they're not getting any change out of that Ethiopian defense. Now the Ethiopians actually lead in possession. Overall, might, Uganda still ahead, yeah? They might lead in possession, but now the cranes are moving forward. Bran Omon. Trying to chase that down, but uh, the ball not finding uh, the best cushion. And look at the picture on your screen. There is no Ethiopian player that was originally in the Ugandan half. That is how much they're having so many men behind the ball, this Ethiopian size. And maybe making it very clear as well, we are defending as a team in the second half, and we are attacking as a team. As the Uganda cranes here excite the fans with putting a few passes together. Only can go as far as short tail. And he does play the Ugandan fans as well back by having a good piece of skill against Robert Sentongo. champions in this region. The Uganda Cranes. To most of the fans are still coming out and suggesting they want an appearance at the Africa Cup of Nations. Bob Williamson knows uh, a win of uh, at this very tournament will have the fans back but both were not the best. Yeah, it's Bayani now running into the box. Samson Wonga quickly off his line. He came off the bench and now he's starting to cause problems uh, for the Ugandan back line. This is good best mark and good composure as well. Yeah, absolutely. Best with Kidane knows that he cannot be touched once he gets into the area. It's a terrible error from Uganda. Almost getting punished. Good position and string of pass. Look at that. This is what the fans will like uh, looking at. You've got to have the glamour of the game as well. A brilliant piece of flair play from Mogase. Tadase Bagale. Sentongo, the man who's embarrassed by it. Nogasa seeming to say if you're in a hurry, well, I'm not. <laughs> oh, you've got to love this game and uh, the thrills it does come with. So just when you felt uh, we don't have so many silky players in this region, that is confirmation for you. <laughs> Interesting. He seemed like to actually say, to ask Sentongo, whoever told you I was going that way? I'm not. <laughs> I have different ideas. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually going this way. <laughs> As they get a great Zia Traeger to break forward with uh, Brian Omoin, but uh, quickly intercepted. But here the men in red are coming again. Godfrey Warosimbi, he's got two options in the box. Can he find any of those? Samson Abson Woku had to keep his composure in this very case. This is good movement. Absolutely fantastic. Walusimbi, but when he gets here, he plays the ball too close to the goalkeeper. He should be cutting it across for the second line of attack because it is crowded near the goalkeeper. Cut it across as a minor. So a, a 45, as we call them in football, and somebody will latch onto it and lash it into goal. Walusimbi disappoints a little there. So 1-0. 
23 minutes to the hour here in Kampala this evening. The weather much, much better for most of the players on the pitch itself uh, since the tournament kicked off, Mark. Uh, not that much rain. The reason we have a crispy clean uh, Mandela National Stadium. But again, the Cranes looking for chances with the lawyer. Good strike up front for the youngster. Bob Williamson, something we've talked about, showing lots and lots of confidence in the younger players. Should I tell you the biggest change Williamson has made today? It's not bringing Setongo on for, for, for as we see this shot from a lawyer. It's not bringing Setongo on for a quick. It is not uh, going back to a 4 3 3. It is actually losing his moustache. <laughs> so the fight for, against prostate cancer has gone. As we see the goal attempts for Uganda 10 and four on target. Uh, Mark, every time I think I know you, you <laughs> surprise me. You're Andrew, talking telling, about the moustache. I'm telling you, Andrew, it's not the fight for against prostate cancer has gone out the window and the small match of trying to win Sakafa again has taken over. So Bobby Williamson is clean seven today. <laughs> That's the biggest change he has made. Wow. He's uh, made a couple of changes. I don't know how many of our viewers had uh, recognized that one, but uh, Mark Sally has decided to focus on the man's moustache. And there you go, it's not on actually. Yeah, see? I see, see, Andrew, trust my vision. <laughs> <laughs> the man has lost the moustache. They fight for prostate cancer, has taken a back seat. Oh, Start to win football games again. Uh, this man did not have the moustache even uh, with the first game of the tournament. So Kabede sticks to his original style. As they get the cranes, try to push forward with Brian Omon. But uh, of course, uh, if you're doing very, very good defending at the moment. Chances now for the Uganda Cranes. Twisting and turning inside the box. Still supposed to shoot. Yes! Oh, yeah, the Uganda Cranes and Robert Sentongo have been thrown into more celebration. And that maybe, just maybe, could be the goal. But friends, they got the Cranes into the semi-finals here. They have had their share of chances. They have missed a couple. But now they got the Cranes have had their cushion through Brian. Sorry, through, through Robert Santon over here. His first goal of the tournament. And the second goal of the tournament. That will be very, very important for his confidence. Look at the turn in the box. And uh, Samson Absan Waku has been left with no option. Yeah, this is a brilliant turn that usually small strikers with a low center of gravity have. Eat your heart out, Romario. Eat your heart out, Sergio Aguero. I can do it as well as you can. That is a brilliant turn. That's a world class finish from this little man. Robert Sentongo has helped himself for a second and given Uganda a more comfortable cushion than they had in the first half. It is a good goal from a small man here, and now it's the Uganda Cranes 2, Ethiopia 0. This is what we've been talking about since the Uganda Cranes scored their first goal. Did say Bobby Williamson will tell his charges to go out there and get the cushion. And now Ethiopia, they already had a mountain to climb, they have a bigger one to climb. As they try to push forward here. We know the goals won't come easy. Also know the Uganda Cranes can very easily make it three. Because then they have the mental strength in situations like these ones. And this makes more decision problems now for Bobby Williamson. Because then you have the likes of Hamis Diego Kiza, who might not score that many goals, but he creates the chances. Brian Omon. Emmanuel Okwe and now Robert St. John, what do you do as a coach? It's a good problem to have. It's the kind of headache coaches prefer to the one in which you actually have no options. So he will ponder over that over the next few days before the semi-finals if they make it there. But it's a good problem to have. The Cranes now pushing for the third goal. Moses Oloya does thread this through. Bradamon he's got St. John in the box. St. John does miss it. And Hamis Diego Kiza. He's the man who was looking to find that chance. But uh, good defending once again by this Ethiopian side. And now, pressure. Yeah, they are turning on the style. They are turning the screw here. They've got their tails up. And the crowd is urging them on. The Uganda Cranes causing problems for Ethiopia here. So Ethiopia react 
by making yet another change. This is the man who scored their first goal of the tournament. The winner against South Sudan. Yonatal Kebede has barely had a kick since then. Why, I ask Sayum Kebede, why did you leave it this late? Or is it not late yet? 30 minutes in which this man has got an opportunity to turn it around and be the hero. Uganda Cranes now having a chance to make it three as Jonathan Kabede takes his defensive uh, duties on quickly. This is Iguma, floats this into the box and uh, it will be a little bit too high for Henry Kalunji who was waiting for it inside the box. And uh, this Iguma does go on and keep him pressing. Uh, with his latest position in the back line but of course uh, he knows that he should maybe have better crosses as well as the Uganda Cranes here break into noise and sound and the songs as well they know their side now is having a couple of chances when it comes to winning the tournament once again if they do that will be the 13th time they have ruled the region they will sing they will celebrate and some will misbehave as well throw those bottles around but all is in the name of celebrations and ethiopia you know they still have time to silence those fans here but can they it is a probably the more logical question as hamza mwonge takes a long one here to new Mark, honestly, can Ethiopia get back into this one? You know how crazy football can be. Yes, it takes a flash. Go fly in in a matter of seconds. 30 minutes on the clock or just under, depending on how much time will be added on at the end. It's plenty of time. It is an entire world of football, even if this man doesn't seem to believe that right now. Looks distraught, the Ethiopian fan. But games of football turn on their head in a matter of seconds. We've seen it before and you can't rule it out of happening. Rule it out of happening now. Inatan Kabede. Tekle Mariam. One of the players who just come on for this Ethiopian side. Scored a the opening goal here. But the system has been coming off the bench as uh, Robert St. Jogo here tries to push forward, but the flag is up. Seems to have been an infringement. And uh, that will give this uh, Ethiopian side some relief, but the Uganda Cranes still trying to push forward. Brian Omoin. He's got an option on the left, and that was uh, Godfrey Walusimbi. That is poor play, you must say, from Brian Omoin. He did have chances of passing that ball on he did did he dally on the ball and now the cranes have lost possession yeah i think he settled too much into a comfort zone too early brian Amon thinks that uh, this game is won and that they can cruise and cost better change that attitude as we look at this robert sentongo shaking off a defender and didn't call for the foul the ethiopians Complaining, and the referee agreeing. The battle for regional supremacy, and as some will say, it is the battle for bragging rights is what is at stake here. And the question is, uh, what will be the end result? If you appear struggling now to get into the final third here. Every time they move forward. So this is their latest attempt, but easily intercepted by Dennis Iguma. Hassan Waswa does give this away, and that could bring problems for the Cranes. Fikru Tefera, one of the options in the box, and uh, the Ghana Cranes uh, do clear this. Now, Baba Kizito, the goal scorer for the first goal. Friends, Brian Omoni, Robert Sanchez is waiting in the center of the park. Can give, give him the ball? No, he can't. Tries uh, to find a shot himself. Moses Oloya. Can he keep this in? Oh. 
attackant, uh, but that was a good attack as well for the Uganda Kings. Uh, Piano Moon having options in the middle, and for the second time in a row, he doesn't easily give that ball away. Bobby will not be very happy with him. I don't think he will. He's going to stop scorer at this tournament. He's done really well in the group stages. He's gone to sleep in this quarterfinal, I'm afraid. The worst thing he could do now is become selfish, looking to add on to his... Uh, own collection. He, he's chasing after Mauricio Ngasa and John Boko. They are both on five. He needs to continue to be a team player. He's always known for to be that. Sanwaso and Godfrey Kizito. The two men with the dreadlocks are in the center of Uganda's midfield a good job at the moment having lots and lots of blocks that they have brought to the game and uh, as Ethiopia prepare for this there seems to be a man down so that will be the man we've been talking about get as top scorer at the tournament Brian Omoy doesn't seem to be comfortable at the moment uh, he seems to be out there looking uh, for more fitness yeah hopefully it's a, a small knock that he can shake off and come back on or at least shake off before the semi-final you're gonna have uh, the opportunity to get there they are not yet there but they would not like to lose their top scorer he's a man with the experience to lead them to a title he's done that before even if it was all of four years ago he was the top scorer in 2008 when they won it and uh, of course they'll be hoping to more of those chances as the cranes now struggle with fitness concerns bobby has a couple of decisions to make if Brian Omoin cannot come back but here is tikro ferreira the captain has struggled with finding the back of the net at this year's tournament he might be the most prolific but what is the problem Mark? yeah uh, sometimes it's the, it's the service it's the strength of the team generally he's surrounded by youngsters remember this is a bit of an experimental side most of, most of the teams have overpowered them a large loss of the service has not been forthcoming he's chasing after crumbs and turning hopeless situations into hopeful actually i never thought i'd say this andrew but that is a striker without a goal who i've actually credited as one of the outstanding players of the tournament well the got cranes now make a bad substitution so brian Omon will not be coming back and emmanuel Oki is the man to come in now does play of course uh, for tanzania giants simba so when it comes to experience uh, with the national side and the pressure moments uh, you've got to suggest he does well as well fikru lemesa ethiopia now are trying to build here with the mefin kidane bayene probably goes as far as the god from alusimbi who clears and uh, godfrey kizito is brought down but the referee does suggest play on Mokwe does bring uh, fresher legs to Uganda's attack and uh, a couple of fans wondering why he didn't start in today's match but of course it all comes down uh, to Bobby Williamson as a Fikru here tries uh, to find options for this Ethiopian side uh, the Uganda Cranes backline at the moment standing strong here this is good movement coming in for this Ethiopian side it's stretched out a wide Bayana trying to bring in a cross Adam Zamwonge Quickly coming off his line, and now Emma Okui is doing lots and lots of defensive work. The pressure is changing things here. We yeah, are much better play from Ethiopia. This at least they get close to Hamza Mwonge. Unfortunately for them, too close for their comfort. And Fikru Tefera, you can see, was uh, disappointed. Four attempts on target, on 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 goal, and only three of three of them on target for Ethiopia. They've been efficient without scoring. But you asked me about Emmanuel Okui, and fans wondering why he didn't start. Uh, this one comes in forward for Ethiopia now. Good head as well. They're coming in from Henry Kalunji. A couple of challenges have been realized in today's game. Which again suggests uh, the level of competition, especially at the center of the park here. As Ethiopia flows this forward, they've got one green option in the box. Does take it back and uh, Mzambuange will get that very, very comfortably. 
And now here comes the man who just came off the bench, Emma Okwe. Up again is two Ethiopians and quickly loses possession. Talking about why the fans were wondering how on earth he could not start in today's match, Mark. Yeah, it's, it, it baffles. In a 4-3-3 like the one Bobby Williams have preferred to play today, where you have three out-and-out -out strikers, Okwe is the only one of those strikers that's comfortable with the ball outside the 18-yard area, so you need him. But he didn't start him, he started three number nines, none of them particularly comfortable when they're not playing in the 18-yard area. And that is Hamis Kizas, Robert Sentongo, and Brian Omoni. Now, but Okui, I have known him to have attitude problems. It is a huge suspicion of mine. There's been one or two things he has not done right, either in training or in camp itself, and he's paid the price. Well, you, I can tell you that uh... That criticism will now cease to appear because the Uganda Cranes are leading. Uh, maybe if the Uganda Cranes were two goals down, the fans would be asking Bob Williamson for an explanation why uh, Okwe is off the bench. But you can trust me. The fact that they are leading, the fans will say it was uh, a masterclass when it comes down to tactics <laughs> from the bad from Scotland. Yeah, you're not fooling me though. I can see right through that, <laughs> Bobby. Yeah, sometimes the end justifies the means, doesn't it? Yeah. So coaches get away when they get the result. But you, it can only take you so far if you actually are getting it wrong. There's a few other games to play in this tournament, but we'll see. Oloya finds Okwe. This is the man the fans thought should start. He's got chance to shoot, twisting and turning in the box. And uh, he just couldn't find the space he was looking for, the Simba man. Good clearance as well from Yareda Zinab Shawartil. This is a chance. Yeah, it's the comfort on the ball that I told you he has. Ability to twist and turn, a change of pace. Dami here, Shimi there. As we see those Uganda fans. But he's desperate now and that desperation because he hasn't good scored a goal at this tournament. He had five last year as Uganda won in dark. So that might be playing on his mind and the fact that he lost his starting place Andrew will also be playing on his mind a little oh especially with the semi-final coming up if the Uganda Cranes go on to win this one we'll be hoping to start as a good work here from Oloya into the box looking for Hamis Diego Kiza and that will be a corner kick for the Uganda Cranes getting the chance for the Uganda Cranes now to score their third goal in today's match that will be their second corner to a piece it has been so far. That is just how crucial corners are in matches like these ones. Uh, but for now, the Uganda Cranes have seven shots in the box. Not the best of takes we've seen before. Now is it chance for Ethiopia to counter-attack? T3 again S3, but lots of white shots returning now. Bogale, Shortil, straight to the midfield, Tega Girma, Didn't seem to do well in keeping this one, but uh, a free kick has been given again his team. Now the Uganda Cranes will build once again, the fans though here giving them a real good account of support so far getting into the final 13 minutes here at the Mandela National Stadium okay he's got got from Olusimbi on the left does find him twisting and turning he's got Hassan Waswa in the middle quickly finds him as well good turn from the captain and Baba Kizito now Henry Kalonji then it's Iguma, the Uganda Cranes trying to keep and string lots and lots of passes together, but quickly losing out once again. This Ethiopian side. Okay. Seeing lots of the ball since coming off the bench. So the neutrals will wonder if you can still have. Uh, a shootout here. This is a lawyer then. The, not have uh, the best of takes. Let's say his corner, and this is it, Mark. Yeah, this is clearly a case, more a case of his boot and his stance than that of the playing surface. We know the playing surface is much, much better today than we had last week. 
when the rains were coming down, the heavens have closed a shop, if you like, over the last couple of days. And the Nambole pitch is back in pristine condition, or at least improved position, condition there. So lawyer can't be blaming the surface. Oh, here he is now trying to find Emma Oki. Now Ethiopia can break as well, but quickly lose possession. Dennis Iguma, he will fancy his chances from this area. Good striker from the right back. And just the ball was always rising. He couldn't find the target. This is good movement, Mark. Yeah, this is 30, 35 yards out. It's a good attempt on goal. He's got every right to go on goal. His team is leading. He almost caught out the goalkeeper there. Samson Waku has got to be a relieved man. That could easily have dipped at the last minute. Ethiopia looking for options in the box. And uh, quickly, Anza Mwonge. With a good cross uh, coming in uh, from Yonatal Kabede. Take a Mariam. He's not had that couple of chances since coming off the bench. But now the cranes. Robert Asenjongo. Him again is the goalkeeper. It's a good striker from the short striker. But he just couldn't find the target. And the cranes could very easily have had their third goal here. Yeah, strikers are not expected to pass in this range, but I tell you, Okui is not happy. He passed the ball to him, he's back in the center, expecting a return pass. Setogo goes for goal, and it's on the other side of the post. The goalkeeper almost caught out at his near post, though. The fans in the stadium here, yeah. you can trust me, we'll take this party from the Nambole Stadium to the streets of Kampala tonight, if the cranes can make it. 10 minutes to the 90 here at uh, the Mandela National Stadium as Fikru Lemesa is the latest Ethiopian on the ball twisting and turning trying to find space off Henry Kalonji takes it back and a couple of exchanges that have come in for this Ethiopian side between Fikru and uh, Hussein Igemo here he is on the ball now Trying to thread this forward is the interruption by Henry Kalunji, and now uh, Godfrey Walusimbi can finish the clearance. And again, the cranes now uh, making that substitution again. A very impressive, uh, Saidi Cheyune. And the cranes game here does come on for Hamis Kiza. This is equally one of the substitutions where you see the coach is thanking a player for good performances. Yeah, exciting young player made his debut, and what a, a memorable one it was against South Sudan. Set up two goals, one for Moni, one for Hamis Kiza, being rewarded here with some playing time as this game trickles towards the end. Said Cheyune is a midfielder, what replacing a striker, meaning the cranes slip out of a 4 3 3 and go 4 4 2. Now it's just MLP up front with uh, Robert Sentongo. Said Cheyune joining Baba and uh, his captain and uh, also Oloya as a, in a four-man midfield. I guess Tedese getting the yellow card here for a push. I think it was on Okui, was it? It's time to confirm that. Yes, it was on Okui actually. Clumsy one, the referee does suggest. So then back to the traditional formation here, like Mark says, uh, for the Uganda Cranes now. 4-4-2. Four, four, two. two strikers left up front. And uh, that also means that Bob Williamson is actually tightening issues now in the center of the park. Because he had three midfielders, and now he has four. He's trying to make sure Ethiopia don't have lots of possession. As the Cranes now, here try to push forward and easily cleared. Uganda now has more men at the center of the park, Mark. Yeah, and that's where Ethiopia enjoy their dominance when they are in control brought a man who can actually keep possession. Fikru. Yigema. Can you bring a cross into the box? He's got three options putting on green. This is a good chance coming in for Ethiopia. And Henry Kalunji. Bring the man who quickly came to the rescue. Miss Fina Kidane Bayene. He is the man who was looking to launch a strike here. Now Ethiopia. Still trying to build, still looking for all that all important goal here. Isaac is in the standing strong. Good piece of skill as well. The center of the park here 
from uh, Bekele Debele. So this was uh, Elias Mamo. The fouls in this game just keep increasing. 35 fouls we have had so far. This is floated in. Fikru Lemesa is always the option. And uh, a strike that look just in the four goal has gone actually way, way, way wide. This is uh, taking your eye off the ball map. Yeah, as the ball drops to him, he fancies the volley. Completely miscues that. When, when you get hold of them on the right part of the boot, they fly straight in. As we saw from Elias Mamo, his teammate in that game against Kenya. And when they don't get the right part of the boot, they are embarrassingly wide. As was with the case with Yasin Salah there. In Ethiopia fast running out of time to get back in this. Although if they scored now, Andrew, they would throw it wide open and would have a frantic finish. The fans here in the stadium. Uganda Crane side no now they're getting closer and closer to finishing that lineup for the semi-finals reminder for you is that whoever wins this game will check on Tanzania as Uganda Crane strike Lord forward here is a quick good control inside the box and uh, he was getting closer and closer to facing Samson Afson Woku but good defending we've talked about uh, from uh, Yared Zinabu Shawartil and the cranes now losing possession because Ethiopia are pushing forward every time they are looking for goals but of course having the advantage in terms of shots on target of which they have scored twice Ethiopia know they must keep the ball they must keep in Uganda's half as well if they had picked something from this game the latest uh, ball will not excite their fans including uh, Sayum Kabede Medelcho, one of the men who's had lots of running since the game kicked off. The Prince now playing it short in defense. And they quickly concede a throw in as well. So then uh, the emotions are very clear here for the Ethiopian fans. They are not excited by what they see. And these fans will know this could be their last game at this year's tournament. Already pondering their way back home. Yeah, when you say back home, it's not back home to Addis. Huge Ethiopian community that lives in Kampala. We actually have such a thing as the Ethiopian village. <laughs> these guys will make just the way their way to Kansanga. And that is home for them. Yana Crane still looking for that all important strike. Maybe that uh, will have the bragging rights fully restored. Joseph Baba Kizito quickly finds Said Chayne, tackled now at the center of the park. It's Ega Gima. Now, can they break? One of the options up front is their captain, Fikru Lemesa. Three minutes to the final whistle here for the 90. And uh, as it stands, Ethiopia's time is really, really running out. Okay. Scott Robert Sentongo in the center. And uh, the goat chances as well on the option as uh, Baba Kizito was trying to create space on the left. And the cranes will continue to fancy their chances. Godfrey Walusimbi, can he find an option in the box? This is brought in, but only as far as Tego. Who is fouled? Sega Gima looks uncomfortable out there. He only came on as a sub. It would be a shame if he had to limp off. European fans here have added plenty of color to the tournament. Fortunately for them, the beautiful game has gone all wrong. 
the trail 2-0 and this which is why these Ugandan fans will celebrate Ethiopian fans really despairing here <laughs> oh if uh, you know you're getting into the final two or three minutes of your time in Kampala you suddenly can't be excited uh, like these fans here now no will be into the last four and uh, we'll have a challenge against the Kilimanjaro stars here on Thursday well as it stands the Cranes fans will take the party all the way and I can be sure those watching us here on the world of champions have maybe started already popping the champagne across the region these are those supporting the Uganda Cranes okay now trying to find spa space for the Uganda Cranes. He's got Robert St. Jongo as an option. Finds Saidi China. This is brought in for Okwe. And uh, the flag was up. It was uh, never going to count uh, if he had gone through anyway. Incredible this. You can tell the, about a man who is under pressure. Usually has more composure. His own side, by the way, is usually more composed in front of goal than this. But it's under pressure. He's not scored at this tournament and he's lost his starting place. And he's too eager. Sometimes that works against you. Okui is skying that. There you go. A minute to the 90 now here at the Mandela National Stadium. It is getting more clear that the Ghana Cranes could be on their way to the semi finals. Ethiopian fans. Uh, it very very clear that they are not excited about what is happening here Kalonji knows he has one final piece of work to do here that is of course keep a clean sheet against an Ethiopian side that will at least want to find one goal at this tournament here is Fikru Lemesa trying to control this one in the box good defense as well from Isaac Isinde, and now chance for the Cranes to move forward. Okui trying to break away. Sees Robert Sento, he's got Okui in the box as an option, and that is not the best of crosses. Three minutes of additional time here. And uh, you wonder what will happen in the final three. Suddenly, not enough time, Mark, for Ethiopia to score twice and maybe find a winner as well. Yeah, it's increasingly unlikely now. I never say never in football. I'm afraid. I fear that Ethiopia have run out of time here. As they drift in there. They've got themselves a free kick. It's a small window open here. And it is taken quick for Fikro Tafera. But he is blocked by the Ugandan back line. And now Saidi Cheyune. Looking for space to attack, but quickly taken back by Bugale. Aloya. Tayne. Iguma. Aloya. Baba Kizito. Good for it. Walu Simbi now. Uganda enjoying the possession as we get into the final seconds here. Is the captain Hassan Waswa. Baka to Kizito. Takes a long one. Saidi, Waswa. Well, well, final minute of time added on is closing in. Ethiopia. Clock not friendly to them at all. The scoreline not friendly either. And now Uganda will frustrate them further by keeping possession for this last minute. And here goes a lawyer. Said Cheyune. And lawyer has lost out. And left it to China to play it out of touch. Ethiopia throw. Quickly, desperately. We need to be getting the ball forward here. So they go route one. Cut out by Isaac Isinde. And again. Chizito Baba. 
good play from the young midfielder. Such a dynamo. Sentongo, out wide to Okui. Okui cuts inside, gets appended. That's a free kick here for Uganda. It might be the last action of this game. As we first move into the 94th minute, because it's uh, just a few seconds for the three minutes to expire. Some yellow cards being dished out here. I wonder why. Fernando Raki steps over the ball, stands over it. I wonder if he's going for glory here or setting up his teammates. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually went for glory. Although there's a small chance that he'll leave this to God for Alusimi and his left foot to swing that in. Really the last action of the game. Expect the whistle to go just after this. But can Uganda rub it in? Okui goes for it. It's over the bar. So no icing on the cake for Okui. No first goal at the tournament for a very frustrated man. And he won't care too much. 2 0 is enough. It's the knockout phases, and it doesn't matter how many goals you get, that, but that you get one more than the opposition. But they've got two more than the opposition here, Uganda, and they've played themselves into the semi finals. The hosts celebrate. And the flags are flying, the drums are sounding, the Vuvuzelas. It's yellow, red, black in no particular order, on the pitch and off it. Robert Sentongo's second goal of the tournament is what sealed it, is what made it safe. The first one, after the messy run from Oloya, was scored by Chisito Baba, tucked away nicely. Oloya, leggy player, the creator-in-chief right there, Chisito Baba covering his new found skills as a goal scorer now this man is more of a natural goal scorer and he did make it safe long after Ethiopia had played themselves back into it in the end it's been comfortable for Uganda Bobby Williamson and his players will celebrate time for the refreshments here the last quarter final has been completed and the semi-final lineup is complete it will be Uganda up against Tanzania and it will be Kenya up against Zanzibar. Mouth-watering action will relish. Under the floodlights here at the final whistle. It is Uganda 2, Ethiopia nil. So let's go down to the touchline. Andrew is there waiting with the coaches. Well, thank you very much, Max Ali. The party here has just started, and you can trust me, it will continue in Kampala for the rest of the night, because the defending champions, the Uganda Cranes, have made the last four at this year's tournament, beating Ethiopia by two goals to nil. It wasn't exactly such a straightforward result, but the Uganda Cranes had to work off their nails to make sure they can pick maximum points here at the Mandela National Stadium. And now I'm joined by the head coach of the Ethiopian side, Sayum Kebede. It's the end of the road for Ethiopia, but how hard was today's game? Uh, okay, and as usual, I'm telling you a lot of times, uh, this is an experience for our young players. So all the players, they are giving what they have. So it is uh, an experience players, I'm telling you that. So it is good for us uh, just to, to check how our players are looking for. So uh, to, according to our object, I'm not uh, more complaining than anything. I'm agreed with what they are doing in my place. So it's normal. They are doing all the best. Coach, do you look back at the game and think you got some tactics wrong? Normally, it's not the, ta the wrong of the tactics, but uh, it is uh, the quality of the players sometimes, you know. The, the Ugandas, uh, they have a good experience players in a lot of spaces. So that is the difference between the quality of the players, not only the tactical. So these players, I'm telling you, are experienced players. In future, they'll be good for the future of the Ethiopian national team. Thank you very much, coach, and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. All right, there you go. Ethiopia are out of the tournament, and the coach has made it very clear that he did not get his tactics wrong, but you also have got to look at the quality of players he had in his squad. He also talks about experimental players at this year's tournament here in Kampala. And now I'm joined by Bobby Williamson, popularly known by those fans as Bobby. Good win, and Uganda is through. 
Yeah, it was a very tough match, as you've seen, and uh, I thought it was a lot of good football played, even though the circumstances of the pitch. The pitch is very bobbly, it makes some players look stupid at times, but uh, I'm very pleased for the players, very pleased for the fans, because these guys certainly work hard. And uh, let's talk about the first goal scorer, Godfrey Kizito. Not so many games under his belt for the Cranes, but he's been impressive in terms of goals and playing as well. Yeah, uh, the goals are a bonus uh, as far as I'm concerned with Baba. We, we, want him, we want him in the team for his enthusiasm, his hunger, his desire, and he, he's got that in abundance. But uh, scoring goals, he's added to his game and we're very pleased.